Hello everyone, my name is Michelangelo and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about motorcycles and specifically commuting in hot weather. Uh, these are the five major things that you need to know about commuting in hot weather. And when I say hot weather, I do not mean 80 degrees. I do mean like, you know, desert 100 plus degrees because I do live in El Paso, Texas. And this is my experience and my advice on how to combat the hot, dry heat in case you live in California or Las Vegas or also in Texas in the desert. So all five of these tips are relatively of the same importance. Um, I would say only one of them is probably, there is one that would be the least important, but again, that, that one is also more of my opinion anyway, but the very first thing you need to do is ditch all the black, right? Uh, uh, motorcycling in general has this really weird addiction to black and being all murdered out and yes that looks great it looks fantastic when it's fall when it's spring when it's winter but when you live in the desert and it's 110 degrees outside you will be sweating you'll honestly it is very dangerous to be wearing all black when it is that hot out the amount of sun absorption that you're getting by wearing black is a really large issue especially if you're wearing leather um, if you're wearing a lot of leather and it's black and it's hot, like that is a very bad combination. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do it, but there are much better alternatives than wearing black. And unfortunately, in the motorcycle world, black is the most common color. If you consider black a color, we can argue about that later. Fight me in the comments. But basically, that is the best tip I can give you. Change out your helmet, your gloves, your... Uh, your jacket and even your boots that'll make a huge difference if you are not wearing black even switching to a slightly less of a color like red or blue even if it's dark red or dark blue will still be a lot better than black now with that being said I do have a black jacket and black gloves but I only wear them into in the winter when the hottest it gets in El Paso is 65 degrees so in during the winter it's okay to wear black if you live in a climate where in the summer it's 100 degrees but in the in the winter it's only 60 that's perfectly fine i'm not saying you have to toss out that leather jacket but what i am saying is that if you do intend on riding in the summer to not wear black that is the biggest tip i can give you it is a life changer i promise you the second most important thing is that you need to hydrate right technically it's the most important thing but the second thing on this list is that you need the hydrate if you are dehydrated you will feel way hotter than you actually are actually you might be as hot as you feel because when you're not properly hydrated your body cannot properly cool itself because it can't do what it can't sweat so when it can't sweat then you can't cool your body down which means you're going to overheat and when you overheat that's when you go through a whole mess of problems you start cramping you get dizzy you get nauseous it's a it's a bad day right so if you know you're gonna be riding in a hot summer especially if you're a commuter like myself like pedialyte is your friend though i highly recommend you do not drink that every day but to supplement pedialyte um along with the the gallon of water you are drinking every single day yes i said a gallon you can do it i promise you it's not that hard but you need to be drinking at least a gallon a day if you are riding a motorcycle in the desert heat. So first thing, light colors. Second thing, hydrate. You need to hydrate. So the third and fourth kind of bullet point kind of go together. Uh, so the first bullet point that I want to talk about here, not the first in the tips, but the first that of the two that go together is mesh jackets and mesh gear in general. Yes, I understand that mesh is not as safe as textile or leather, but when again, it is as hot as it is, it is a life changer. It is a game changer to wear mesh. Now you can look and you can try to find tests and stuff. I, I did a little bit, honestly, it got a lot here that I just stopped carrying. I just started wearing a mesh jacket during the summer and again it was life-changing now if you live in southern california where you have the ocean breeze and it's 90 degrees but it's 90 degrees but you have that cool that cool ocean breeze from the pacific ocean cooling off you can get away with a leather uh a leather and textile jacket here in el paso where the heat is dry when the air blows it's hot and dry and everything is just hot leather and and textile is very very difficult to do at least for me unless i want to be sweating all day and drink two gallons of water a day so 
with that being said um, wearing a mesh jacket really helps now if you commute in the city I highly 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 recommend a mesh jacket just because it is much harder to commute in the city than it is on the freeway like I do because the freeway is a lot more open air actually gets around and you're going at a speed where air is actually being pushed through your jacket whereas in the city it's more in stop and go traffic so I highly recommend you wear a mesh jacket in the city now what the piggyback off the mesh jacket is shorty gloves not wearing gauntlets now i personally wear gauntlets during the summer but that's just because i these gauntlets aren't out the door yet they still are very good gloves and i'm not ready to get rid of them yet because they haven't shown signs of of actual deterioration they don't have any holes the stitching not coming apart or anything like that so my next pair though will be a pair of shorties now I, right now I wear a pair of white leather perforated gloves and the reason why I still wear leather gloves but a mesh jacket is that uh, just ask yourself this question what's the first thing that touches the ground when you fall I'll give you a moment it's your hands right so with that logic uh, when you fall the first thing that usually touches the ground is your hands uh, as you can see mesh is not as protective as leather so I still wear leather gloves in case I fall off my motorcycle because if my hands are the first to touch and are the longest to slide then at least my hands are protected by the gloves so the reason why shorty, shorty gloves are okay is not okay in a safety sense but okay when it comes to beating the heat is because shorty gloves do not cover your sleeve so you can actually open up the sleeves on your motorcycle jacket a little bit not a lot you don't want to have a gaping hole because then if you wreck your sleeve will slide up your arm but you can open them up a little bit more than usual and you can actually get some airflow up the sleeve so that is something that I would highly consider and that is something that would really help you out during the summer to beat the heat so shorty gloves and mesh jackets or just mesh gear in general and then the final thing that you can kind of invest yourself in that's also gear related that I sometimes use I don't always use it there's much cheaper ways to do this I actually went and bought an evaporative vest it was uh, like $50 or something off of Revzilla and it, it works pretty good the only issue is that like it's kind of a pain as a commuter because you have to get it wet put it on get whatever you're wearing underneath it somewhat damp right and then once you get to your work or get to the place you're going you have to take it off hang it somewhere because you can't stuff it in your bag because it's wet and it's gonna cause a lot of issues if you stuff something super wet into your bag into a tight closed space trust me you do not want to do that so you have to find a place to hang it up and kind of let it air dry and let it do its thing now a good alternative to this if you're going to a much more casual environment or if again it's 110 degrees outside and you're going to be doing about a 20 minute commute or so is that you can actually just take any t-shirt and just soak it soak your t-shirt in cold water throw it on throw your jacket on and that essentially will do the same thing for fifty dollars less than what i paid for um, your t-shirt will dry faster than the evaporative cooling vest would but it is a good alternative solution to uh, to buying the evaporative vest and then also it kind of reduces the, uh, the the kind of things you have to carry with you uh, because with the t-shirt again if you're doing a 20 minute commute or wherever you're going takes about 20 minutes by the time you get there your shirt will be for the most part dry there might be a couple sections uh, if you wear a backpack the back of your shirt won't be completely dry but for the most part the rest of your shirt will be completely dry and that will still keep you cool during the hot summer so basically those are the five top things that are five top tips that I can give you to beat the heat in the summer if you live in a desert area or if you live in a very hot area like I do is to make sure that you're always wearing light colors for your gear that you hydrate that you wear mesh jackets or shorty gloves or and then obviously the evaporative vest as a last resort Thank you for watching. I hope you all appreciate the video. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Uh, if you liked the video, hit like. If you disliked the video, hit dislike. Subscribe if you want to see more content, and I'll see you all in the next one.